Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom and I can't keep up with this now um, because it's another championship hire. We knew it was coming. There's all these hires this, this week and there's probably one more to go. We've been, we've been given an idea that dropped the bait in before. So a couple of days ago, Swansea City, who um, had lost Graham Potter to Brighton, one of the few actual championship clubs where the manager doesn't get fired and leaves with his head held high and goes on to um, greater things. Um, Graham Potter is now being replaced by Steve Cooper. Who is he? I hear you say. Well, it's a new one to me. Um, championship follower. Don't really follow the England national setup. But if you did follow the England national setup, you will know that Steve Cooper is uh, very young, 39 years old, and he was the coach of the England under-17 team. Um, I think we're talking um, Foden, hudson Adoy, Sancho, that crop of players that won the under-17s World Cup um, last year, year before, fact-check me on that, prepared to be wrong. So... Cooper is going to come in to Swansea City. Um, and this is a really, really interesting appointment. So Swansea, if we trace it back, had been relegated from the Premier League. Remember, they've got these American owners who, ooh, had they dabbled a little bit and then pulled out the money a bit. Remember the Bob Bradley disaster and obviously the relegation then after that, Paul Clement in there as well. Um, so Potter comes in and people get fed up of me saying it, but as a team that comes down then, parachute payments is a big giant advantage. But Swansea held fast and pocketed some of the money and didn't go on a big spending spree last season. Ollie McBurney was, I guess, a key signing um, in from Barnsley. One or two others coming in, Bursant, Selena as well, um, Cameron Carter, Vickers. But none of the craziness we saw, no kind of I don't know, Dwight Gale or name any of five players Stoke a um dropped loads of money on. Um, so Swansea, a bit more conservative. Um, Potter comes in and it's... Um, it's all very much based on possession and recycling the ball um, and a real big clear philosophy for Swansea. Obviously, the emergence of Dan James and Rodden at the back and McBurney. So a kind of young, stylish team. Grimes starring in midfield with the crazy good passing stats. Um, I think we all know if we watch the championship what we're going to get from Swansea. Um Never really cracked the top six. They were there or thereabouts at the start of the season. And then I think the general consensus was if um, the money that was tied up in people like um, Montero and Bonnie, those Premier League, Leroy Fair, those Premier League players that had been there and had these big contracts, um, I think if that money was allowed to be um, used and untied, that he probably would have got into the top six Potter. But, um, you know, kind of operating in that second quartile of the division. Bit of a push towards the end of the season. You know, they could have made it with two, three games to go. I remember um, Derby going there. And I think if Derby hadn't... Say Derby and Bristol City had drawn and then Swansea had beaten Derby. We'd have gone into the last game of the season and Swansea would have been... Um, really in that hunt for sixth place. So off goes Potter. He gets picked off by um, Brighton. And it had been a long time for Swansea. And I've just um, read the BBC report saying they'd looked at 60 names. And people with more experience in club management than Cooper were definitely mentioned. They've got um, Leon Britton Consulting as well, who's um, been with Swansea all the way up and and right the way through their progression. So Cooper is the name. Um, I guess what he brings is if he's in that England setup, they're all 
terribly qualified in terms of the actual theory of coaching and the way the championship now seems to be shaping out well um everyone seems to go now towards this director of football sporting director model and i think with stuart weber now having two promotions on his cv no parachute payments at huddersfield and parachutes just run out at norwich i think a lot of people are going to be looking and saying well look a coach is a coach now we need a long-term plan. My theory, and it is only my theory, is that two years of good planning executed well puts you as probably one of the best five or six run teams in the championship, given there is so much gambling with managers and money and these parachute teams panicking in year one if they're not up there replacing. We've seen Stoke do that. We've seen West Brom do that. Um, Swansea have changed manager. But the one thing I will say about Swansea is if they now stick to the plan, they could be in a good position. Um, and look, this could all go terribly, terribly wrong. And um, I'm not beyond admitting I was wrong. But I've got a fairly good feeling about this, um, this appointment and what the Swans are doing, if they stick to the plan. And there is a quote from Steve Cooper, which will encourage all Swans fans that says... Um, something to the effect of um, I've already been studying the style of play um, with a view to next season. So he is not going to come in there and go, I'm Billy Big Boots manager, insert name here. I want this player, this player, this player, and I will play this way regardless of whatever the hell you've done last season um, because I've been successful before and that's why you should pay me this much money to do that. He's not going to do that. And I think that is smart by the Swansea owners. I know a lot of people do not think that the Swansea owners are smart. Um, so I think he's going to go in there. He's going to take um, what Potter did well last year, i.e. Uh, Rodden and Van der Horn are going to pass until they're blue in the face. Grimes and Byers are going to recycle the ball over and over again. McBurney is going to score you the goals and Selena's is going to link things up. Um, and I think he's going to work with that. And I guess the hope for um, Swans fans is that this guy is going to have more knowledge than probably anyone in football on the 17s age group and young players coming through under that age as well. So expect some loans from Swansea. Expect him to buy players that are in the system already that he knew of that maybe aren't being used. So if he looks at what they did last year and keeps that plan going forward, we know that puts you ahead of a lot of other championship teams with new managers and ones coming down who are going to regenerate squads, etc., etc. The only issue we've got here, and uh, Swans fans fill me in on this because I am by no means an expert, is the management of funds and changing your balance sheet from a Premier League balance sheet down towards a championship balance sheet. Now, the utopia, the ultimate example is what Stuart Webber did at Norwich, where he had the last year of the parachutes and obviously the sales of Madison and Murphy to flip that into a really good squad with really good recruitment and... Um, a style of football developed over a long time that then peaked in that next season. Obviously, that's going to be very, very hard to replicate. But Graham Potter has done a year of groundwork there. So Dan James is gone. That's 15 million in. I know I keep hearing this figure of 20 million to balance it out. Um, for Norwich, it was even more than that, maybe 30 odd million to fill the hole and basically be able to, not necessarily, come, I'm not saying these clubs raise that amount of money and then say, right, that's our parachute payment to cope with the others, but to just transition into a viable championship balance sheet. I still expect a sale, one or two more sales and a bit more wage cutting from the Swansea end. Obviously, they wouldn't want to lose the young I guess now Grimes will be the guy or Rodden will be the guy because they're not going to want ageing 
Jefferson Montero or Wilfred Bonney or whatever name, Premier League name, Leroy Fair, um, they're going to want the young, exciting players. But if they can do that and just release a little bit of money for um, Cooper to use, I think they're going to be in a really good spot. And I think he'll have a bit of gravitas with the members of that squad. I haven't looked through the team and seen who's available for that. And obviously, you're not going to get Jaden Sancho, Phil Foden or Callum Hudson-Odoi. But I'm sure there are other players in and around that squad who he'll be able to romance and get in. And I'm sure he will have even named names in the interview as well. So, the long and the short of it is I'm really behind this appointment. If they continue the overarching plan that Potter started and they use the strengths of last year and he adds whatever he adds and they don't throw him under a bus in the transfer market, i.e. sell lots of players pocket money, don't give him anything to replace. That's a damn hard job. Um, and although you might say, well, look what Weber and Farker did last year. They did spend, you know, Norwich wasn't um, done on zero money. They cleverly flipped it and um, managed to generate a new viable championship balance sheet that ultimately won them the league. And in the car crash that is the championship... You've just got to be better organised than these teams. Um, and you do give yourself an advantage. Anyway, we're expecting another one. Um, we're expecting Woodgate to be announced anytime soon. So let's keep this Swansea. Um, what do you think about Steve Cooper as an appointment? How do you think he'll do? How do you think he'll fit? How do you think Swansea will fare next season? Let me know in the comments. Follow me on Twitter at Benjamin Bloom. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell and stay tuned because I'm going to be talking about, spoiler alert, Jonathan Woodgate probably in the next 24 hours at a guess. If I can bloody well keep up, check out the Slavon Bilic video as well. Thank you for watching.